Welcome back to another edition of Account! Where we have only the best vintage test instruments of days gone by. Today in the Retro Tech Spotlight, we have a classic, a venerable classic, actually one of my favorite names in the retro era. Wave Tech. Oh, that name is synonymous with quality throughout the 80s and the 90s. BDM35 is a good looking bench meter, a little bit thinner uh, by today's standards, definitely not as wide, but it's still a fair size meter, will take up a chunk of real estate on your desk. The BDM35 was manufactured 30 plus years ago, way back in 1994, uh, made in Taiwan. Oh, I love these test instruments. I was really lucky about five years ago I acquired this uh, in brand new condition, still in the box, sealed. So yeah, those deals do abound if you're looking. BDM35 is long and sleek. It has those neat built-in ridge lines that kind of give it a sense of, I don't know, proportion style, but it's very well done. The aesthetics on here just overall gives it a good looking meter feel. Take a look at the back, look at that compared to today's bench meters, pretty sparse in uh, comparison. Here we have the uh, low down where it was manufactured, Taiwan, as you can see, uh, the serial number, the AC plug-in and a 32 milliamp fuse. That's about it. Also have these uh, wraparounds here and that's for the AC cord as well. So if you're gonna move it around, get somewhere to put that cord, kind of a cool idea. But definitely much sparser than today's modern bench meter. Another nice touch that the WaveTap incorporated is these sort of rubber inlays here on the back of the meter, uh, on the bottom as well, so it doesn't slip or slide. It's just a little tension to detail, which was really and nice. The tilt stand, as you can see, <laughs> totally functional. I mean, it has a complete 90 degree uh, way of moving, so that can come in really handy, depending how you want to place it, where you want to place it, the whole nine yards. WaveTech even decided to put their WaveTech logo right in the front. Cool. Turning the WaveTech on simply couldn't be easier. Simply press that red power button, hear a little beep, bada boom, bada bing, and we are in WaveTech business. Look at that display. Very nice after 30 years, it's still going strong. Oh man, they sure knew how to make gear back in the day. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, we have a nice bar graph as well. And right now we're in millivolt mold, so it's kind of getting a little bit of that uh, resonance coming, but that's completely normal. All in all, just a, a really good display. Now, let's remember this is 30 years ago. So, uh, you know, I I'm impressed. Don't have a backlight, unfortunately. So no backlight on this liquid crystal, but nonetheless, it's pretty easy on the eyes. Have that WaveTech manual as well, model BDM35. Pretty thick, all in English and uh, nice, looking instructions, illustrations, the whole nine yards. Um, WaveTech didn't miss a thing. So they went into a lot of detail and uh, you know, obviously as an end user, you can appreciate having uh, something to refer to when you need it. Excellent. So front panel of the display itself, we have our ba power button and we have, look at this BAT. That stands for battery because there was an optional battery pack that you could have purchased when you got your BDM35. Um, yeah, and that would charge while the unit was turned off. When the unit was turned on, there was no charging indicator per se, but it was an option. It's not on this particular wave tech, unfortunately, but very cool. Battery options on a bench meter 30 plus years ago. Common or ground, and we have a 20 amp as well as a two amp input. So I like the fact that they separated those high current along with the, well, not so high current inputs. Nice touch for safety. Look at the display here as well. Min, max, hold, rel, mem, read, because it did have a memory feature. We have temperature, frequency, a capacitance, resistance, the high current, the low current, and of course our voltage as well as diode, range, AC, DC, uh, continuity. I mean, this was a loaded little bench meter in 1994. A test lead input goes just and like we have it hooked so. up to the precision reference. And look at that, Mr. WaveTech 5.00 is what we want and WaveTech delivers. 
30 plus years old, hasn't been calibrated since the day it left the factory, and wow, that says volumes. Just for giggles, I thought I'd put the little West End beside the Wave Tech, and wow, you can see a difference in size. Um, also, from generally the same era, LED display as opposed to the LCD, but nonetheless, much smaller than the BDM35. In resistance mode now, and we have up to a 40 mega ohm uh, in the resistance range, which is pretty darn good. Um, so anyway, let's take a peek and see how we do uh, with some precision resistors. And right now I'm just trying to see if we have any resistance on those test leads, and it's very minute, but it is there. So we are gonna hit that rel feature to rel it out. All right, here we go. I'm gonna start off with what is a 9.998 ohm resistor. And we are coming at 10 10.0, 10.1, awfully close. Now the precision resistor itself says 10 ohm, but it is a, as I said, a 9.998. So two counts, not complaining with that. And now we have a 10K resistor. It's actually 10.00K coming in at 9.99. So as you can see, even though 30 years have gone by, They've been very good to WaveTech, and uh, these meters are awesome. I mean, they still have that functionality, that precision that uh, you would expect from a name uh, synonymous with quality. Finally, we take a quick look at capacitance, put it on the capacitance mode. Now, it has a small range here, only goes up to 40 microfarads. So, yeah, capacitance was uh, nowhere near as uh, refined as it is today. I'm just going to check here on this old Fluke demo board. It's got a 3.3 microfarad cap here. Let's just see how that does. And coming in at 3.08, which is a cool feature. I've got it hooked up actually to a, a power supply right now. And uh, you can hear that alarm coming from the WaveTech, just letting you know that, hey, get me off the microfarad range. I smell DC. Something else I wanted to mention is just how smooth that scale is. Uh, we're in DC volts right now and going back and forth from 15 to 30 volts thereabouts, but look how smooth that bar scale graph is. That is really, really nice. Brother, check it out. I'm telling you. Um, yeah, that's why RetroTrack is just so exciting. I mean, look at the attention to detail that WaveTech incorporated in this build. The quality is through the roof. And let me point out the shielding on the upper part of that meter. Oh my goodness, I've never seen such a massive amount of shielding in my life. The entire circumference of the top of the bench meter is covered I mean, that in. is just awesome. And that shielding is not taped in or some haphazard way of doing it. No, look at that. It actually has a, uh, a metal rivet inlay on either side that is holding that shielding in place so the you know attention to details through the roof that did not spare a dime wave has inserts as well on the top of all of those screws because yeah you had to take out the fuses you had to pull off the top it was only four screws no big deal but man wave tech made sure that in doing so you wouldn't hurt the housing and wow I have to say, in all my years, this is probably one of the best fabricated bench meters I have seen. Uh, the tension to detail is through the roof. And I mean, considering this was for the mainstream tech back in the day, now these weren't cheap. Um, but that being said, uh, they 
did not spare a dime. Okay, let's start off with the back of the unit here where the 120 volts comes in. Uh, we have our one fuse, one replaceable fuse here on the milliamp side. Now that you could do without removing the housing. If you had to change your high current fuse or your low current, there they were. And look at the size of that massive HRC over here. Unbelievable. It is massive. You take a good look as well. What do you see? Well, more shielding to begin with. Yes, the other side, the bottom part of the meter is also completely shielded. So you had a total Faraday cage when you were t doing your test measurements, which really negated any possibility of EMI interference. Nice big honking transformer over here, uh, converting those AC volts. And look at this. Look at this speaker. It's massive. Um, you know, I'm just staring at this in awe because I'm just so elated that, you know, you can see what quality uh, used to be there. I mean, it's still there, but you really have to look for it these days. And I mean, this was par for the course with WaveTech. And this is why I'm such a fan of WaveTech because, you know, the more of their stuff I've seen, the more of their test instruments I've seen, the more I've just been over, overly gobsmacked by the quality that this uh, company uh, put out. As I mentioned on the high current side, look at that 20 amp little fuse, massive, massive one. Uh, there you go, we'll put it back where it's supposed to be. Clicks in with authority, gotta love it. And speaking of loving it, check out the size of that current shunt. That is massive, that is a massive current shunt. I mean, it is at least an inch and a half high in length. I don't think this picture is actually giving you the gist of it, but wow, that is a huge shunt. I think this is a slightly better angle you get an overall picture. The size of that shunt, I mean, they were not messing around. And look at that. If calibration was your thing, check it out. If your meter started to drift over time, which in this case, 30 years later, and it hasn't, but if it did, you can actually self-calibrate it yourself. You've got all of your calibration pots conveniently located with the voltage as well as the frequency that you need to calibrate with. Um, you have your three volt over at 500 hertz. You have your 300 millivolt over here. You have your 30 volt at five kilohertz. I mean, it's all there. And if your capacitance went south, well, not to worry. Over here as well, you can adjust your capacitance with this pot over here. So um, calibration wise, you were definitely good to go if you had the BDM35. Well, if you take a look, there is that battery option right there on the motherboard itself, the PCB. Battery option here if you wanted it. I guess that's what those uh, twist ties were for. I didn't even know they used twist ties 30 years ago. Hmm, go figure. But battery option, the batteries would have gone there, your rechargeables, and they would have been held in, I'm assuming, with those twist ties. So, uh, kind of cool. All in all, just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous uh, interior. And I even check out those input jacks. Look at that. Oh, big, beefy, solid, not going anywhere. Oh, man. Okay, gonna put everything back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. That was a lot of fun. Hey, I hope you enjoyed taking this trip down vintage memory lane. You, me, and the WaveTech BDM35 Bench Meter.